It is another bumpy day across parts of central and eastern Kentucky, tracking hail producing thunderstorms and flash flooding just ahead. A Clay County man is now facing murder and many other charges after police say he shot his pregnant girlfriend who later died at UK Hospital. She has had the horse for 20 years. Now an Owen County woman wants that horse back. We're talking with law enforcement and family about the search for a stolen horse. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Heavy rain has been pouring in eastern Kentucky today, creating some concerns for flash flooding all across that region. And we are tracking more rounds of showers and storms in eastern Kentucky. Our WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day continues tonight, and we begin with Chief Meteorologist Guys, watching the southeastern corner of the state, where indeed we are seeing more in the way of heavy rain producing showers and a couple of rumbles of thunder. Good news, those hail producing storms from a little earlier have now weakened and pressed on out of the area. Southeastern Kentucky, though, flooding rains over the weekend. You're getting in on another round of just torrential rains so far on the day. We've had reports of greater than an inch or two into parts of these same areas. Flash flood warnings are out for all the counties that you see here in green. That'll stretch from Pulaski and Laurel County through the Big Sandy Valley all the way into southern parts of West Virginia. Up close and personal now on where we're getting in on the heaviest rains. A little bit of thunder and lightning here across Bell County into Knox County. London, heaviest rains are beginning now to taper off. You get into Manchester, Clay County, Boonville, Owsley County, toward Jackson here into Breathitt County and northeast from there. This is the area to really watch some of those creeks and streams. Had some significant flooding yesterday into parts of this area and we're going to try to do it all over again over the next few hours. Though thankfully we're starting to see the back edge of the rains pressing into the bluegrass region and that will eventually make its way on into southeastern Kentucky. So guys over the next two maybe three hours still the possibility of some creeks and streams leaving their banks into southeastern Kentucky. We'll continue to monitor that and let you know if we uh, get any additional warnings or information to pass along. Chris, thank you. We have some new information on a breaking news alert here in Lexington. Part of Man of War near Nicholasville Road remains closed right now because of a crash involving a fire truck. The fire department is telling us that an engine on an emergency run and a car collided there. At least one firefighter suffered minor injuries. We're now being told that the driver of that car has life threatening injuries. The road there at Manowar is expected to be closed for a while. The police department crash reconstruction unit is on the scene, and we have a news crew at the scene. We'll have an update from them on WKYT News coming up at 6. Back to our weather concern tonight. The concern continues in eastern Kentucky with flooding. Today's rain is causing major flash flooding in several counties. Check out this picture from Highway 11 in Owsley County. The EMA director there says the road is impassable and they've closed it, but they have not had any reports of high water rescues or injuries at this time. You can track the latest forecast, radar, and weather headlines on WKYT.com and on the WKYT News app. And you can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. A Southern Kentucky man accused of shooting and killing his girlfriend is expected to face more charges soon. Police in Clay County say that 52 year old Samuel Cornett shot his pregnant girlfriend after she ran to a neighbor's house for help. She later died. Cornett was in court today. Police expect to file murder and fetal homicide charges. Phil Pendleton's talking to Cornette's aunt, who says she witnessed her nephew's violent outburst. Inside this back bedroom of a home on School Branch Road in Clay County, I can still hear her saying, Help me. I got number. Amanda Ross says she witnessed a moment of horror when her nephew kicked in the door looking for his girlfriend, Alicia Ty. And then when I come in here to try to save her, he pointed the gun at me. Tell me it's gonna kill me. Moments later, police say Cornette fired two shots at Ty. And yes, I love Sam. But Sam shouldn't have done what he did. I don't know why he did what he did. Relatives say that Ty was actually holding the couple's two year old child when she was shot. We're told that Cornette then took that child and was later arrested by Manchester police. Ty was rushed to UK Hospital where she died Sunday. She was three months pregnant. We expect to take this case to the uh, Clay County Grand Jury sometime in the next two weeks uh, where we're going to seek uh, murder charge and fetal homicide charge as well. 
Cornette is also facing wanton endangerment, assault, and burglary charges. Police say he injured Ross and one other relative, but she says the emotional trauma he left may be far worse. I tried to stop it, but I couldn't. Cornette remains in jail on a $750,000 cash only bond. He did not want to talk to us about the charges. In Clay County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. We are told that Ty and Cornette's two year old daughter is now in the custody of social services. A woman faces. A woman faces charges tonight after deputies say she hit a moped driver and then took off. Our county by county coverage at 5 30 begins in Pullman County. 22 year old Emily Hickey is charged with murder and leaving the scene of an accident. Investigators say a homeowner. Uh, the, the person appears to have been drugged about 100 feet uh, to 150 feet away from the collision where the vehicle then made a, a right hand move. The body appeared to have uh, left from under the vehicle and or in front of the vehicle and uh, the vehicle then left the scene. A piece of Hickey's car hood was found at the scene. Deputies traced the car to a home in Pleasure Ridge Park. The car's owner says her daughter hit a deer and took the car to a body shop. Investigators seized the car and arrested Hickey. And in Boyle County, deputies are searching for a missing woman. Deputies say that 38 year old Tammy Holt was last seen with Richard Rose. They tell us that Rose has warrants out for his arrest and they're not connected to this missing person's case. They do not suspect foul play. Deputies believe they may be in the Whitley County area. And an Owen County grandmother is asking thieves to return her horse. The sheriff believes someone stole the Glass family's horse off of their farm on Caney Church Road last week. New at 5:30, Kristen Kennedy talked to the family about that theft. This is her baby. This is her big giant baby. Kristen Glass's grandmother had this big Belgian named Dandy for 20 years. She says he was her late grandfather's, so and when her grandfather passed away, her grandmother kept caring for him. Every morning she would come to him and um, feed him, and he was just her big baby. Last Monday, that baby didn't show up for breakfast. Well, my grandmother went to church Sunday morning. Before she went, she came down and fed him. And then um, she saw him as she came back through after church. And then the next morning, Monday morning, a week ago today, she came down and fe tried to feed him, and he wasn't here. Family think whoever stole Dandy cut right through this barbed wire and brought him out to a trailer waiting on the road. I just hope that they find it in their heart just to bring him back. No questions asked. Just bring him back, drop him off in the middle of the night, and that's it. We, we don't care. We just want him home. They reported the case to the Owen County Sheriff's Office. Of no significant value. Just the sheriff says, you know, to her, he's everything. His deputies are still idea? searching. Yeah. In Owen County, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. And Glass says the thieves also broke into the barn and took a metal trash can and a water trout. New tonight, a judge has temporarily banned the city of Louisville from removing a Confederate monument near the U of L campus. On Friday, the city's mayor and the university president announced that they would remove the monument that honors Kentuckians who died fighting for the Confederacy back in the Civil War. The sons of the Confederate veterans and a Republican running for Congress filed for a restraining order today. A judge has scheduled a hearing for Thursday. For now, the city cannot move the monument. They are pretty to look at, but they can lead to some big problems. Experts say a bird bath or a small fountain in your yard can attract thousands of mosquitoes. And this season, mosquito treatment businesses are seeing a big jump in customers. Mike Linden tells us how you can keep those pests away. The spring is in full effect, but mosquito season is just getting started. We are just uh, at the onslaught of the mosquito breeding season, so it will continue to get worse as the temperatures rise throughout the year. With an increase in the mosquito population statewide, concern over the spread of the Zika virus is also on the rise. If we get sustained temperatures of you know 60, 75 degrees for you know seven to 14 days at a time, that's when that, that cycle really starts. Hillenmeyer says when it comes to mosquito breeding, it doesn't take a lot of standing water to lead to a big problem. So for something like this, a small fountain or a bird bath, all it takes is a half of an inch of water, and that could lead to thousands of mosquitoes showing up on your property. The mosquito authority will typically add around five new customers a week. 
But with concern over the spread of the Zika virus, that number has shot up to nearly 30 new customers a week. You know, there's been other outbreaks before. You know, you've got West Nile, uh, dengue, chicken, gunya. Um, but, you know, this one really hits home with people, um, you know, women especially and expectant mothers. State health department officials have confirmed six cases of Zika in Kentucky. Hillenmeyer says now is the time to prepare for the peak of the breeding season. You know, I don't think it's something that people need to be extremely alarmed over, but we want to do everything to keep them informed, and it's always best to over prepare uh, more than anything else. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. And the Mosquito Authority is partnering with St. Joseph Hospital later this month at the maternity fair. They're giving away 500 home mosquito treatments to expectant mothers. Still ahead on WKYT News at 5.30, funeral arrangements have been announced for UK basketball star Ed Davinder when people can say goodbye to him. Showers and thunderstorms into southeastern Kentucky causing additional high water issues. We'll run down the latest warnings right after the break. WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day continues. We've been in severe weather day mode for a few days now. It's just been those rounds of thunderstorms drenching parts of central and eastern Kentucky yesterday. True severe weather today had some hail and flash flood potential in eastern Kentucky with that watch that will continue this evening. Defender Radar Network, Busy Bee over the past few days. Southeastern Kentucky, hail producing storms are now a thing of the past. Some general light to moderate rains remain with a flash flood warning for numerous counties that are shaded in the green here. That goes from Pulaski County all the way to the Big Sandy Valley. London, just a few sprinkles left over. Barberville, we're trying to dry things out as of now. Uh, to the north of that, that's where we've had the flash flooding into parts of Breathitt County, Owsley County, maybe northern sections of Perry County through McGoffin, Johnson, and Floyd. To the north, very sharp cutoff on the back edge of the rains. East side of Lexington, where we are in Winchester Road, absolutely drenched today. West side, north side of town, not so much with some general light rains. Then you get into parts of Georgetown, Frankfort. Hey, you were lucky to pick up a drop of rain. You can really see the areas who've been getting in on the steadier rains into the upper 50s to low 60s as of now. Frankfort 66, 65 into the Louisville area, but look to the northwest and winds over the next few days coming in from the north. This is a chilly pattern that is setting up shop across not only Kentucky, most of the eastern part of the country over the next few days. So here we are, first week of May, talked about this a few weeks ago, that we would get into Derby Week and start to see a chillier pattern setting in, and that is really kicking in as we go into later Wednesday and Thursday. Tomorrow, can't rule out an isolated shower thunderstorm. More dry than wet tomorrow. We go into Wednesday, more wet than dry. Then on Thursday, an interesting day, that if skies are clear Thursday morning, we could start with a kiss of frost, with temperatures mid-30s, then ending the day into the afternoon with some clouds bubbling up and a gusty shower or two as thermometers struggle to get out of the 50s. Hour by hour forecast, brand new through 11 this evening. Still some lighter rains, Eastern Kentucky. Now, through the day tomorrow, you're not going to have this just big line of thunderstorms like what we've had each of the past uh, several days. We will see a spotty shower thunderstorm that will go up into the afternoon and look at those temperatures tomorrow afternoon. Low and mid 60s, and with a gusty wind out there, it may feel a little cooler than that. Wednesday, another cold front is right on top of the area. We may actually spike it for a brief time Wednesday, middle of the day into the 60s. Then look at 5 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. When you're heading home from work and school, you're going to need the jackets because of some showers and storms. And oh, yeah, temperatures in the 50s during the afternoon. Thursday morning, 34 degrees showing up on this particular computer model for Mount Sterling. 37 Lexington. If winds are up a little bit, we're okay. If winds die down, a little touch of some frost would be a possibility to start out the day. That extended forecast. We spend most of the day Wednesday into the upper 50s, most of the day Thursday into the upper 50s. Gets better though. Oaks Day on Friday, upper 60s. Now we're into the mid 70s on Kentucky Derby Day Saturday, and then the mid and upper 70s chance for some thunderstorms around Sunday into Monday. So some ugly kind of sandwiched around some nice weather for Oaks and Derby. Let's hope that keeps true for Oaks Day and Derby. We want this upper level low that's giving us the ugly to get on out of here quickly. That's that what we're rooting for, that right? That seems to be the case right now. Let's just kick it on out. Maybe that's what I'm rooting that's for, for sure. Right. <laughs> exactly right. You're going to be there Friday. Thanks, Thanks. All right.
Live look at Lexington rush hour traffic. Several problems to deal with this afternoon, including the very serious collision on the inner loop of Man of War at Nichols Park. It's near Nicholasville Road. So this time of day, it's causing extra issues with traffic as police try to figure out exactly what happened in that collision. We just had one on the outer loop of New Circle 2 at Versailles Road. So traffic backing up now from Georgetown to Versailles Road on the outer loop. That happened a few minutes ago. Drive times to Nicholasville. You can see there were impacted because of that collision, but that's mainly going to get to things on Man of War. There's also, uh, actually, in the Scott County on 75, we're looking okay. Now back to the studio. Officer Don, thank you. Now we are continuing to track a breaking news alert here in Lexington. Part of Man of War Boulevard is still shut down because of a crash involving a fire truck. It happened near the intersection of Nichols Park about an hour ago there on Man of War Boulevard. Monique Blair is live at the scene. Monique, have you had a chance to talk to police yet about this? Sam and Amber, I just finished speaking with police, and you can see it's a very active scene out here at the intersection of Nichols Park Drive and Manowar Boulevard, which is not far from Nicholasville Road. Now, the Lexington Fire Department tells us this fire truck that you can see in the distance, engine number 15, was responding to an emergency call on Winthrop Drive when the accident happened. You can't see the car very well, but there is one in front of this fire engine. We're told that car was traveling in the opposite direction of the fire truck when it somehow jumped the median and struck the fire engine. Now we are told one firefighter was trapped in the engine and had to be extricated from the engine, but he was able to get out and we're told he does have minor injuries, but he was taken to UK hospital to be checked out. The driver of the car was taken to the University of Kentucky Medical Center and we are told that person has life-threatening injuries. Now accident reconstruction units are here at the scene trying to figure out exactly how this accident happened. Right now the inner loop of Man O'Wall War Boulevard is closed at the intersection of Nicholasville Road and Man War. I can tell you traffic is quite backed up right now on Nicholasville Road. So if you it would be probably be best right now if drivers avoid this area. And of course, we will continue to keep you updated as developments come in. For now, I'm reporting live in Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. And as she just mentioned, we will continue to track this breaking news alert and have an update for you coming up on WKYT News at 6. Funeral arrangements have been announced now for former UK basketball player Ed Davender. Davender died last week, two days after suffering a massive heart attack. He played for UK for four years in the mid to late 1980s. He is 11th on Kentucky's all time scoring list. Ed Davender's visitation is Thursday morning at 10 at First Baptist Church, Bracktown. His funeral will follow at 1 o'clock also at the church. The Cats AD discussing his women's basketball coach. Well, we heard from Matthew Mitchell last week. Today we asked Mitch Barnhart about the upheaval in the women's program and more spirit with his final derby workout this morning. Jackie Gary Stevens on the cool train by Bob Baffert. That's up next in sports. Three Kentucky Derby hopefuls working out on the Churchill Downs track this morning in advance of Derby 142. More spirit trained by Bob Baffert, the Santa Anita Derby runner-up putting in a final derby work. He went five furlongs in an excellent 59 and four. That was the second fastest of 27 of the distance. That time pleasantly surprising Hall of Fame writer Gary Stevens, who's trying for his fourth career derby win. Bob hollered at me when, when we pulled up over the uh, radio. He said, man, he said, we got a shot now. He said, we could hit the board. So he's always, <laughs> always full of jokes. But uh, I didn't know what the time was in, until you guys just told me. So uh, that, that puts a smile on my face because it was, it was absolutely breezing. So um, like I said, we'll just see if he's good enough on Saturday and, and hope the Derby gods are smiling down. UK Athletics Director Mitch Barnhart speaking with us on a variety of topics this morning, including the UK women's basketball program and head coach Matthew Mitchell. Last week, Mitchell lost another player and two more assistant coaches. He held a news conference Wednesday to discuss the situation and formally announced the hiring of Kyra Elsey as his associate head coach. Mitchell said at that time he's had the support of Barnhart, who has also been critical. I didn't mince words with him. I said, you know, we, we can't continue to, to go through this time and time again. And, and he doesn't have any desire to do that. I think it's not like he's sitting here going, boy, I wish for this. I, ho I sure hope this happens again. You know, he never did that. He, he did. He said, you know, look, I, um, I'm just not comfortable. And, well, okay, let's find a way to get comfortable. 
and let's get to a spot where we've got some consistency and we've got some stability for a while. If we've got people that are so successful moving on to head coaching jobs or they've got something that's so spectacular they just can't turn down in their life, then that's great. Uh, what we don't want is for uh, there to be a sense of turnover for the wrong reasons. Former Moorhead State Guard Corbin Collins is heading to Alabama for his final year of eligibility. Collins, who averaged 11 points and three assists per game last season at Moorhead, will be eligible to play immediately as a fifth-year graduate transfer. And Dunbar All-State Guard and Sweet 16 MVP Tavion Hollingsworth has picked up a scholarship offer from Travis Ford, the new coach at St. Louis. Hollingsworth helped lead Dunbar to the Sweet 16 title, scoring 86 points with 21 rebounds in the state tournament. In the next half hour, trainer Steve Asmussen talks about his two derby hopefuls. Stay with us. We're right back after the break.